Hello everyone, Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to the Learn Daily Physics. So today we have started a new lecture series for atomic and molecular physics. So in this first we are going to talk about the atomic part and then we are going to talk about the molecular part. So the first topic here you can see on your screen is Pohor's atomic model that this is the simplest we can say this is the simplest or the starting model uh, which describes the radius and energy and spectrum many other things. So let's talk about Bohr atomic model and today we are going to discuss the, its postulates that uh, what are the main postulates of Bohr atomic model which we are going to use in our next lectures. So Bohr atomic model describes the hydrogen or hydrogen like atoms, atom whose outermost shell contain one electron Bohr and because uh, when the electron jumps from outer shell to inner shell it does not uh, uh, tells us more about the shared electrons because when electrons are shared the energies are separated and Bohr's atomic model don't tell us about that so in Bohr's atomic model there is a mixture of classical theory plus quantum theory so some of its postulates are classical while some of them are quantum we will see when we are talking, when we will discuss their postulates, I will tell you that which one of them are classical and which one of them are quantum. So, the next we see that the Bohr describes the radius, energy and the spectrum of the atom. The Bohr describes the radius, we, we say Bohr radius and the quantization of the radius. Bohr tells us that the radius of an atom is a quantized thing and the energy of an atom is a quantized thing and we can we can mm, form a relation between the spectrum and we dis we will discuss the hydrogen spectrum and we will see what the red bulb constant is okay so now let's move on to the postulates in the postulates first postulate we say that the electrons are moving around the nucleus in a circular orbit this electron let's say this is electron and this is revolving here on a circular path this circular path is called orbit okay this circular path is called orbit and as long as the electron is revolving in the same orbit as let's say that this electron is revolving in n equals to 3 the quantum number n equals to 3 this electron will emit no energy moving in a same orbit or in the same state when this is in a state n equals to 3 in, in let's say this is state 1 state 2 state 3 so in state 3 when the electron is revolving in the same state state 3 that is state 3 no energy is emitted no energy is absorbed or emitted okay so neither it absorbs energy nor emits okay so these orbits are discrete quantized states or the stationary states of the atom here you can see that the these these orbits are discrete every orbit contains some specific amount of energy okay for example this contains 10 this contains 15 and this contains 20 or 25 okay so every one of them have some amount of energy some specific amount of energy in the last we will discuss that how we discuss that how we describe that energy so in the last postulate we will discuss that so in the next postulate we say that only those orbits are allowed in which angular momentum of an electron is an integral multiple of h cut the first postulate we have was a classical one okay but this postulate here and a cut where we contain the Planck's constant it is purely quantum thing when we talk about the Planck's constant or we put a cut in somewhere then we are talking about the quantum thing okay then we are talking about the quantum mechanics now so this time and a cut this is a quantized thing 
and we are saying that the angular momentum of an electron is an integral multiple of h cut l is equals to the n n h cut n is the number of n is one two three four five uh, here principal quantum number and uh, L is equal to, we know that the angular momentum is equals to R cross P. It is the cross product of radius into momentum and uh, it, momentum is equals to MV into R is equals to NH cut. So L is equals to MVR is equals to NH cut. So this postulate is very important and we are going to use this equation next when we are talking about the radius, Bohr radius or the quantization of radius. So now you can see that uh, we have talked about first postulate and the second postulate. Now we are going to go to our last postulate here. So our last postulate here says that when electron jumps from a higher energy state to a lower energy state, a photon of energy HF or H mu you can write is emitted. Okay, so how an electron or how an atom emits energy or a spectrum we say. So this electron, the, here you can see that we have three states n equals to 1, 2 and 3. Let's say that we are saying that this is E of n, this state have energy E of n and this one have E of P. Okay. So we will mention here that E of N is greater than E of P. Because this is in a higher orbit and we know that the higher states are have more energy than the lower one. Okay. So let's see that. When you provide energy, how much energy? It, it won't get uh, for excitation we need to have a specific amount of energy and what is that specific amount of energy this del e is that specific amount of energy and it is equals to the h mu or hf h Planck's constant into the frequency so let's say that uh, we need uh, E n minus E p. This is E n minus E p. The energy of the higher orbit minus the energy of the lower orbit is equals to H f or H p, which is this. Well, how we can write this H f? This is the amount of energy required for uh, obtained by a photon. Energy for an electromagnetic wave, you can say, or the energy for a photon. So E of n minus E p. This is del E. For example, I said that this contains 25 and this one have 15. So 25, 25 minus 15 is equals to 10. So we need 10 electron volt or 10 joule, you can say whatever the amount, whatever the unit you want to use. And it's mainly in electron volt. So we can say that 10 electron volt is the amount of energy which is required for an electron when which is when required or provided to this electron it will jump from this n equals to 2 to the n equals to 3 this is the process of excitation okay when this 10 electron volt is provided to this atom this electron from n equals to 2 will jump in n equals to 3 when it will jump to n equals to 3 now it have to de-excite okay nature don't allow atoms you can say that the natures don't allow materials to stay in excited state it go for the de-excitation and reduce its energy it tends to reduce its energy so to to be stable so atom to be stable will de-excite as it will de-excite it will jump from this higher orbit to this lower orbit and this third postulate is saying that when it will jump from the higher orbit to the lower orbit it will emit a photon and this is that photon and its energy will be equals to same as it will absorb and this energy in in a particular case will be 10 electron 
volt same energy absorbed by an atom is the same energy released by that photon in the case of that photon and this is the process of excitation and de excitation and this is the main reason that how and uh, we can say that how uh, a hydrogen spectrum of a or any other spectrums are formed so the any these all spectrums are formed because because of excitation and de excitation electron gets energy and jumps from low orbit to the higher orbit and when it de excites from higher orbit to the lower orbit it it emits photon so this is the main in fe in this is the main feature these were the main feature we are talking about we've talked today so in our next lecture we are going to talk about the bohr radius or the quantization of radius that uh, we will see that how a radius in the bohr model is quantized okay so till then assalamu alaikum and see you next time in my next lecture so if you understand what i'm trying to say just give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel